Hi, it's Liz from Fast Kitty Crafts. Today's tutorial is going to be so much fun. A few weeks ago at Target, I saw this adorable green Christmas loopy sweater, and I thought, I think I can make that. So I, with a little bit of practice, I think I accomplished it. I used a little less than three balls of this Red Heart Super Saver yarn in Hunter Green. It's a size four weight. And I used a size L or eight millimeter crochet hook. We are going to begin by making the right front, or well, the right as you're looking at it when it's laying down flat. So we will just start with a slip knot and we'll chain 19. The first row will be a row of double crochet. So in the second chain from the hook, I create a chainless double crochet, which is a single crochet stacked on top of another single crochet. So in that first single crochet, you turn it to the side, and then in those two side loops, make another single crochet. And then just continue with double crochets to the end of the row, and then you will have 18 double crochet. I always like to begin my first row in that back bump of the starting chain. It's more secure and it's easier to work into later. So now we've reached the end of our double crochet row. So the next row will be our first row of the loop stitch. First we'll chain one and turn and then I'll do a couple just so you can see what it looks like first and then I'll explain. So it starts off like a single crochet. You insert your hook into the next stitch. You drop a really long piece of yarn in the other hand. And then yarn over both pieces of yarn with your hook and draw through your stitch. And then drop your loop down and hold it with your middle finger of the other hand. And keep this loop on top of your free yarn. And then yarn over and draw through all three loops on your hook. I admit this stitch takes a bit of practice. To be honest, I've never done this stitch before this project, but I, I looked it up on other YouTubers' channels and I practiced and practice makes perfect. The loops don't have to all be exactly the same. It kind of adds to the shaggy Christmas tree effect. And sorry, the yarn got a little curly right there. I was struggling with it a little bit. So I had mentioned I found this stitch on other YouTubers' channels, and there must have been about three or four different methods of doing this, but this was my favorite, and it seemed to be the easiest. And here's what our loops look like. It helps to tug on them a little bit. It makes them a little more secure, and they sort of point downward, which is the correct way. And keep that in mind, when we sew up the garment later, you want all the loops pointing in the same direction. And now we've come to the end of our first loop stitch row, and the next row will be just another row of double crochet. So here I am finishing the last stitch, chain one, and then we'll do another chainless double crochet in that first stitch and double crochet to the end of the row. So to continue on with this first piece, we're just alternating the double crochet rows and the loop stitch rows for 20 rows total. So that's 10 double crochet rows and then 10 loop stitch rows. 
And now here we are at the 21st row, which is a double crochet row, and I'll show you how to do a decrease. We're going to start shaping the front V neckline. So now we are going to work our double crochet decrease on those last two stitches of the row. So just yarn over like usual and insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through two loops, but don't finish your stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And then your next loop stitch row will just proceed as normal. There's no decreases or anything on the loop stitch rows. And so here I've cut ahead to the end of the next double crochet row. I wanted to show you the decrease one more time. So we'll just be proceeding with these decreases at the end of each double crochet row until you get to the 31st row. That'll be your last decrease row. And here we are at the end of row 33. This row of double crochet has no decrease. It's just the same number of stitches as the previous loop stitch row. And then the last row will just be a normal row of loop stitches. And so your front panel will be 34 rows total. And so the right panel is all done, and now I'll show you how to do the decreases for the left panel. And so the difference is, for this panel, the decreases will be at the beginning of each double crochet row. So at the end of row 20, which is a loop stitch row, you just chain two, turn and then place a double crochet in the second stitch. And so when you come back with your loop stitch row, you ignore the chain two and then just go into that last double crochet. And so to finish this piece, you just perform your decreases at the beginning of each double crochet row until you get to row 33 and there's no decrease in that row and then your last row 34 is a regular loop stitch row. And now we're ready to make the back. It's just a rectangle. You start by chaining 41 and the first row is 40 double crochet across. And then just repeat with the pattern we've been doing with the loop stitch row and then a double crochet and so on until you get to 34 rows total. And my cardigan is a size small and it measures 19 inches across. I'll be sure and give some sizing tips if you need to change your size and I'll write them down in the description box below. And now I've laid my back piece down with the loops pointing down and the wrong side up and my two front pieces on top with the right sides up and the shoulders lined up and then you just stitch the shoulder seams in place. And now we're ready to make the sleeve. We're going to start with the cuff first, which is a slip stitch ribbing. And so we'll just chain six, turn your chain over, and slip stitch into the second chain from the hook and into the next four chains for a total of five slip stitches. And 
time for the next row, just chain 1, turn, and then slip stitch into the back loops of these slip stitches. And so to finish your cuff, just repeat this row for 16 rows total. Here is what the 16 rows look like. Sometimes they're hard to count because the stitches are so small, but maybe this will help. And so the first row will be a row of double crochets and we'll start with another chainless double crochet. And then you just find spots along the edge of your cuff at about each row. And we'll need to have 16 double crochet. And then we'll chain one, turn, and the second row will be another row of the loop stitch. The next row will be our first increased double crochet row and we're going to increase on both sides. So we'll just add two double crochet into the first stitch and then we'll end the row with two more double crochets in the last stitch. And then the third row will just be another regular row of the loop stitch. And so then we'll need to repeat our increased double crochet rows and then the regular loop stitch rows for 18 rows total. And then here's what it looks like as we proceed. And then from rows 19 to 32, there is no more increases. It's just the even pattern. And here's what the sleeve looks like when it's all done. And I've opened up my garment and I've laid it out flat and I'm centering my sleeve onto the shoulder seam and then you just stitch it in place. Oh, and I don't have a picture of it, but be sure to then stitch your underarm and side seams. And now we're moving on to the ribbing at the bottom of your cardigan. In the lower corner on the right side, we'll attach our yarn and chain six. And starting with the second chain, we'll slip stitch for five stitches, just like we did for the cuff. And when you've completed your five slip stitches, you will slip stitch into the first two unworked stitches on the bottom edge of your cardigan.
and then just chain one, turn, skip your first chain and then those two slip stitches and slip stitch into the last five slip stitches of the ribbing. And then just chain one, turn, and repeat this process until you get to the end of the cardigan. And I have a little tip for the turning because it's hard to keep turning the whole thing clockwise over and over again. So when I reach the end of the ribbing, I turn clockwise, and then when I get to the garment, I turn counterclockwise. So it's just easier and faster to turn it that way. And when you've come to the end of your ribbing, don't finish off because then we'll be working on the front edges. And now I'll meet you at the other end. And now I switched to my size K or 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. So now we'll chain one, turn, and begin by placing a half double crochet in that first stitch of the cuff and then along the edge of the cuff and then we'll be placing half double crochets evenly along the front edge of the garment, around the neck edge, and then down the other front edge. And now we've come to the other end of the other front edge and we'll chain one, turn, and place a half double crochet in the first stitch. And the next stitch will be a front post half double crochet. So we'll just yarn over, insert your hook underneath the post of the next stitch, and then proceed with your half double crochet. And the next stitch will be a back post half double crochet. So we enter from the back and then go around the front and then proceed with your half double crochet. And then just repeat doing your front post and back post half double crochets until you get to the end of this row. And so for the third and fourth rows of this border, we'll be repeating this front and back post technique. You'll see when you get there, you go around the front posts of the stitches that are popping out to the front, and then you go around the back posts of the stitches that are popping out to the back, and then this is what it looks like when your four rows are finished. And now, oh my gosh, we're almost done. Now we get to sew on the pearls. I bought my pearls from Dollar Tree in two sizes. I was getting a little lazy. I just started sewing them on from the front with a double thread. And then you just sew them on randomly on the top half of the front and the back and then the top half of the sleeves. I really love how this cardigan came out. It looks so cool and the fit is really flattering. I hope you enjoyed crocheting with me today and if you do make this cardigan be sure to tag me on Instagram.
Happy holidays! <laughs>